Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cowabunga Ranger Talk. I am Mascara, the ruler of time and space, obviously. Uh, no, um, man, yeah. he always tries that, doesn't he? It always yeah. backfires on him. <laughs> the time ruling, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think it pulls us back in time, not go forward. Never mind, <laughs> yeah. Like, with me, as always, is uh, my buddy, the the man behind the scenes that does a lot of editing. He does a lot of work for the show that he doesn't get enough credit for. He adds in images and stuff like that. My buddy right here, David, DTV83, say hi. Hey, everybody. Today, we don't have like a lot of news or stuff like that. But uh, before we get into what we're doing today, how, how have you been, buddy? How's everything? How's uh, your Thanksgiving prepping or Thanksgiving-ish times going? It's it's going pretty well. It's a lot of busy, you know, work at work, you know, because I'm a cook. I do Thanksgiving cooking there. I do Thanksgiving cooking here. It's a, it's a lot, but you know, once a year, what a big deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm here and there and everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Doing a lot of driving lately. Um, a lot of uh, projects and other things are going on. Funny enough, today, like if you see, today's a different layout for me because I usually am just sitting on my chair today. I'm got a different uh, setup here. I wanted to show this first, uh, right here. This is a 12 inch mascara blue figure. He nice. is, yeah, he's actually got some articulation to him. He's one of my action figures, by the way. If y'all don't know, I'm a toy maker and series creator and stuff like that. Since yeah, I'm, so on the I'm, I'm gonna interrupt here for a second. So if you haven't seen this show yet, this is all about Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, retro stuff. Basically, it's basically retro. I am a YouTube creator. Mascara is a toy creator. So he also has a YouTube channel and some other social medias, but his basis is toy creating. And he has a like what three series? I think you said. Or is are you yeah, like I'm a I'm a three time series Wait. creator. And next year I launch my fourth animated series. That's what it was. That's why I said four. Okay, so yeah, that's who we are. So if this is your first time, welcome. If you're returning, thank you for returning and watching our show. We appreciate everybody. Cool. Uh, so what have you been up to? You watch any movies? Anything like that? Any music you want to talk about or? What well, are you up actually, to? I'm actually reviewing, not actually physically reviewing, but re. I'm rewatching the second season of Power Rangers. I'm almost done with it. I decided to go for one, two, and three seasons just yeah. to see what it's like because, you know, again, nostalgia with eyes open as a kid was one thing. Watching it now as an adult, it was kind of funny because, like, I'm at the point where Jason, Trini, and Zach leaves. But knowing yeah. the truth about what really happened behind the scenes makes yeah. that whole episode is different, and the build up to that episode is different because, like the, I think it's like three episodes before that they're not even really even in the episodes. Yeah, the Power Rangers shoots up, but they're not, and it's just kind of weird. And even some of the voiceovers ain't even them. No. At one point, the Yellow Ranger talks. I think it is Aisha making the Yellow Ranger's voice for Trini. It it, it was really weird to hear. Yeah. That was crazy. I mean, right now, uh, you look at it and, and you think about kind of what they ended up like just using as a formula because after a while, they were like, you know what? Let's just fresh cast every year, fresh cast every year. The, yeah. No more of the three people are gone or two people are gone. It, it hasn't really happened. Um, the only time I can think of in recent history was... Um, in Ninja Steel, there was uh, one actor that was hired to be the Ninja Steel Yellow. And he had done some of the promotional work. He had like uh, appeared at some of the Comic Cons and stuff like that. He was already mm -hmm. saying it. And then at the last minute, they pulled him and they brought in another guy to be the Ninja Steel Yellow. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, but that was still, that was before shooting. I don't know if that was actually before shooting because, uh, what do you call it? We we don't get uh, privy to behind the scenes stuff uh, as far as footage. And stuff. It's very rare. Like we're starting to now get like behind the scenes stuff for like uh, the the Thunder Megazord and stuff. But it's it's been like thirty years, and now yeah. it's just coming out. You know, so 
it'll be another 30 years before we see behind the scenes of Ninja Steel or whatever. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Unless you know there's certain people behind it and then you might see something, but good luck. Yeah. yeah. But I will say, I, I have, there's a guy on YouTube, and I can't remember his name, but he's the visual artist of Power Rangers. And he explains the difference between what's happening today for visual mm -hmm. arts compared to back then. And it's kind of neat because, like, all the lightning effects you see on Power Rangers are all hand drawn, like a cartoon. Like, they would have it, everything's layered. So, what you see for visual effects is hand drawn, all of it. And I'm just watching this going, this is amazing. Like, when the putty explodes and all that from the Z putty, it's all yeah. hand drawn. It's all hand. It's like, yeah. wow, it's craziness. Yeah. I, I, I did see one thing I kind of wanted to talk about before we get into the reviews and stuff. The the heritage auction thing, it's it's still going on oh, at, yeah. at, the, at the moment of it. But last time we were talking about it, because we originally talked about some of the costumes and stuff and like more stuff keeps getting unveiled and uh, re released and stuff like that. And uh, last time I think we were talking about they had like some Beetleborg pieces. Mm, yeah. But now they have next mutation pieces. They have all of the all of the heads of the of the turtles and Splinter. I was like, "What? I thought you you weren't supposed to have this or the movie stuff or you know." It's like they have a lot of stuff. Now. Well, again, I think what it is is like I said this last time we talked about this was, I believe that when Bandai sold the property, they he sold the warehouse too of his. So everything that was in that warehouse doesn't matter if it was owned by Paramount as well as Bandai or. 20th Century Fox and Bandai. Yeah, it was Bandai's warehouse of so Beetleborgs, Ninja, Next Mutation, the movie suits, all that belonged to Bandai at the time, yeah. and that's why I guess it was kind of that gray line where the Hasbro Morphers came out, or they said it's based on the movie Morphers it's because mm -hmm. they knew what they looked like because they had them somewhere. You know, yeah. it wasn't just one of those. Oh, we think they look like this. No, they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah, but uh, this kind of like starts murking the waters because you're right. You're probably one hundred percent on this. This you're like you know like this is probably you're one hundred percent right. They just sold the warehouse of, of costumes. Period. Mm -hmm. But here's the issue: now you're reselling it. So yeah. now it's a resale. So it's back to being on the market. It's not just like a wholesale buy. Like you've seen those shows that they have uh, on A&E and stuff like that, like crate buyers or stuff like that, storage oh, yes. wars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can find whatever you want there. But once you resell it, it becomes a different thing, especially when you're selling them in, in pieces because you're not even trying to sell it all back in, in one. You know, I sold it to you. You sold it to them. No, I sold it to you. And now you're selling it in a million pieces. So now you're yeah. you're talking distribution issues too. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those weird things. You you figure you you start getting with like the legalities of it. They come back up because it's not a wholesale thing anymore. You're not buying the whole warehouse again. You're buying. Oh, I want the white movie suit, or I want the the Leonardo head from Next Mutation, or, or I want the the gloves from RPM or whatever. You know, it's just, yeah. It, it ends up being a different thing. And you know people are... Okay, so here's the thing, too. You know anybody that's bidding on it is going to make a fan film. Right? Oh, well, most likely, that, yeah. That, come on. That's that's where we're going. If if anybody's got a little money together, they're going to try to... Okay, let's, uh, you know, let's do a, a fan film of, like, the Red Ninja Steel with uh, Wild Force Blue or something. Like, uh, they're going to come up with something. And they're technically going to be... Right, because this is using the 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 show suits. So, how fan filmy can it be? It, I, it's a weird thing to call it even independent because Power Rangers is inherently, you know, use footage with American footage. Yeah, you're using a uh, an American suit to film in America. So, would it be an original show? <laughs> I know we're getting in the weeds of it a little. Yeah, we're, nerdy, we're but... going in deep. It's kind of like the uh, Zoo Two. You know, filming, yeah. and that was a whole, that was Bandai sending, uh, sending Sentai actors money to film more Zoo Ranger footage that didn't exist just for Power yeah. Rangers with those same camera movements and everything. Yes, It'd be sir, the same idea. Sir. It'd be the same idea. You know, hey, I got a Ninja Steel studio, you got Dino Thunder Black, and you got uh Turbo. Let's make a fan film 
of, you know, who's the most powerful or something, you know. It'd be the same exact suits, but it'd be a different feel, I think, because you're not going to get that whole uh, Bandai, Once and For Always, Hasbro, or any of those people's techniques, unless you find really talented people. But if you're doing a fan film, I've seen a lot of those. They're good, but they're not what you would expect, you know, from a mainline company. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You watch any movies lately or been to the theater or anything like that? I have not been anywhere besides work at home. <laughs> yeah, um, I've, I've actually seen two. I don't know if I talked about this last time. I saw the Joker Foley, the one with Lady Gaga. No, I don't think you did. Okay, so uh, you guys probably already know the spoilers, so I'm not going to warning spoilers, but... It's basically the the Muppets take Manhattan as far as music goes. <laughs> for real, for real, oh, yeah. Bro. yeah wow. Like, like, uh, like most of the song selections and things like that, and they try to really like. I don't, it's not a bad song selection, but it's just like the same songs. Like you're like, oh man, I remember Fozzie walking in the streets in New York with this music. It's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. yeah, or Kermit or one of these people like you you ripped off hard, bro. And the story kind of don't don't go nowhere. It's one singular idea that they have for the movie, and they, they really don't like, oh look, here's a twist. Because you know most movies, oh here's a twist, here's a this, here's a that. Yeah. Know, to try to keep suspense going. Everything you saw in that trailer for the Joker Foley Deuce, that's exactly what you see in the theater. Oh, there. You're not you're not reinventing the wheel or anything. And that, uh, that's sad. You know, you got all this talent, you got all this money, and you're just yeah wasting it. Wasting it. Walking Phoenix is looking as skinny as humanly possible. Like he's just walking around like a bag of bones, really like uh bro i he looks so sick in the movie he looked sick in the movie before and that was like three years ago so i don't know how he got back in shape to do this that's gotta be terrible he looks terrible like i take some nutrition classes so you look at him and you're like man his liver's gotta be shot or his pancreas <laughs> i don't know yeah. how he got to this shape again for part two it's like what what you well, I didn't. I didn't watch any movies, but I have watched a few things on YouTube that's going to probably upset a lot of people when it comes to uh, fandom of Power Rangers and the whole plastic-free packaging kind of thing. I watched the uh, New York Comic Con Hasbro panel and a part of 10, 20, 10, 24 mm-hmm. on YouTube, and a lot of the GI Joes and stuff are doing card back plastics. So, like, they're on a card back. Mm-hmm. Fully covered in plastic. I think the uh, non-plastic stuff has gone away. We're back to plastic for Hasbro, plastic boxes. But it's it's kind of funny because like they got rid of Power Rangers and they got back into that. Yeah, that one's. I know that one. That one has no plastic either. If I remember, that should be caught ca- uh, paper what, inside. This? Yeah, this, yeah, the, yeah. We'll we'll get into oh, this in a minute. One more thing. One more thing about that. They have all of those on Big Bad Toy Store right now. They're not Ross prices. Yeah. I oh, just man. looked up because everyone's all getting on like Big Bad Toy Store and Entertainment Earth and just scroll through the Power Ranger stuff. And they have all of those listed for $14.99. And I'm like, damn. So I don't want to pay that much knowing that people are paying like $7.99 or $6.99 depending on the location. And it's kind of like the Megazord too. Megazord's at Ross yeah. for like $14.99. I can't find it in my home town not in any of the ones i've gone to i've gone to three different ross to look for power ranger stuff and i found the cosmic fairy morpher in one and the beast morpher one and that was it nothing else nothing special that's but actually looking... pretty cheap though the 14.99 thing sorry to interrupt you yeah no 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 but i'm Cause... i'm actually looking for the megazord if i can find a megazord at ross i have a big reason for this i want to yeah. customize it to the point where everybody's going to scream and yell at me because it's not yeah. going to be typical customization <laughs> I had yeah. a brilliant idea. I'm just going to keep it to myself, but I will show it to you when I get it done. Yeah. I actually bought two of them at Walmart, and I paid like 17 
No, one of them I paid the at full price. I paid the the Red Ranger like this. Yeah. Uh, I paid that one was seventeen ninety nine. Then I waited like two years and I found Trini for like. Like twelve ninety nine or something like that. Like it was a little cheaper, and I was like, "All right, for twelve ninety nine, that's like fine." Then uh, recently, I found the Pink Ranger at, at Ross, so I, I got her for like eight bucks. And this guy, right there, eight bucks. And I'm surprised I got him at this price because this is the Tommy figure, and this Tommy's always the the most yeah. expensive. So that that kind of helps bring out the team. I still need like three more of them. I need the black, the blue, and the white one. But having another one is is still pretty cool. Yeah. I said they're on big bad right now. So if you for eight pay, bucks, yeah. Well, they're not eight bucks. They're fourteen. But that's, that's still cheaper. Yeah, yeah. That, that's still because I've I've been to you know I do like uh, toy reveals and stuff like that at comic oh, yeah. stores and things like that. I've seen these, like the other ones are missing, but I see people selling them for like twenty four ninety nine. So oh yeah, so that fourteen ninety nine is a decent price. It's still that, cheaper than the original seventeen ninety nine. So that one goes for like thirty on Amazon. Oh yeah, thirty it, fifty it, on it, eBay. It, it, eBay goes. Oh yeah, like crazy. I, I, I saw the other day. I saw this for fifty, like forty nine ninety nine, uh -huh. like seven dollars shipping or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and the the other movie I saw was uh, Venom Three. Oh, how was that? That was perfect. Nice. It was a, a perfect finale to the trilogy. And they don't need to make Venom Four. That that's that's if you know about the Venom and the symbiotes and all that oh, stuff. I I love that stuff. I I okay. grew up watching that Spider Man and stuff. You know. Okay, so they. They hit everything they needed to hit in part three. Yeah. The only thing that's kind of a glaring thing is the girl from the first two movies isn't in the movie. Okay. You, you remember the first girl that he's in love mm -hmm. with, and then in the second movie, she becomes like she Venom or something. She's yeah. nowhere near here. They don't even mention her because he's like wow. sort of a drifter. Because in, yeah. in the, yeah, in part two, I think he becomes like a wanted man. So in part three, he's just like, the wandering man basically like like the incredible hulk you know the original currently <laughs> he's like going yeah. from town to town he kind of like this but this it's a little more um direct because it is a movie you have to go from point a to point b but the movie does exactly what it needs to do it gives a lot of cool stuff and it's funny it's it's very entertaining there's there's a musical act just because, like, every superhero movie now has to have a musical act oh, in yeah. it. It's, like, mandatory. I don't know what it is, but everybody and their mother, you got to stick in a song in there. And you, you see Venom, like, dancing with uh, Miss Lee, I think is her name, the lady from the first two movies. That was oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, the grocery store lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her and Venom do, like, a nine-minute dance scene. I was like, jeez, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wow. nice scene it's nothing bad I like it it kind of progresses the story a little bit but not not as much as you think but uh as far as like wrapping up a trilogy it, it did what it needed to do there's no need for part four just give it I, time just give it time there will be you know how these movie companies are they they'll mess it up they'll be like oh the it was a hit in the box office it's a hit on streaming let's make another one no, I don't think there's gonna be another one because I, I think they're gonna like move him into the to the Marvel universe proper because I think he's gonna be in in the in Spider Man four. So I don't think he's okay. needed for the for a, a, a Venom four. I think he's just gonna like start. You know, like they did with the with all of the the other Avengers. Yeah. You know, like they gave him three movies and then they okay now we form the Avengers. We didn't need a uh, Doctor Strange too, but what the fuck, you no. know? What I mean, <laughs> sorry to curse, but you know, like yeah, all right, all right. Oh, we uh, let, let's muscle out Ant Man three. Like you didn't need it. You didn't need Ant Man no. one, but fine, because most of his story was covered in the in Civil War with in uh, with Captain and everything. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's basically what what's going on there. Oh man, I. Uh, I'm I'm happy with the way it ended. The 
Tom Hardy's a good actor. The the movie's oh, yes. got a good taste to it too. It's you're not falling asleep or looking at your phone or, or BSing. No. You're pretty much eyes on the screen most of the time. So Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I give him credit for it. Uh so yeah, uh kind of circling back to the New York Comic Con thing. Did you see anything else that kind of caught your eye or <laughs> No, Cause, cause I, 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 just, I, uh, I I saw I saw what you're talking about, and I was like, yeah. Oh. I just I I watched the whole thing just to see if they would bring up anything new, as you yeah. know what I mean. Nothing. I mean, again, a proper time to bring up the partnership between them and Super Seven, because Super Seven now is doing Transformers, they're doing Power Rangers, they're doing GI Joes. I mean, they could just say. You know, we're partnering up to do the. They're doing Power Rangers because we don't have blah blah blah. blah. We fired this artist. I did Transformers, Power Rangers, and blah, yeah, blah. I sent you that link yesterday. Uh, yeah, I, I watched that. I mean, be, before you even sent me the link, I saw the article about John, and I was like, he worked on Power Rangers as well as Transformers. Jeez, this guy did everything at Hasbro. Yeah, he wasn't credited as much, but he was in all the because I remember him from the live streams. Because remember mm-hmm. when they were still doing live streams for Power Rangers when they were first doing Power Rangers live streams, and they yeah. would have him with like the toy right here, and then he'd be like revealing stuff from his desk. Hey, look, this yeah. is this. This is the the Pink Ranger. Whatever. I remember those live streams, so that's where I remember him. And they they cut him, and it was funny. He, the guy was like, what? He had like 23 years or something like that. Most people yeah. thought he was going to be like a lifer because he'd oh, been, I, he'd seen everything already. But 23. He, he should have been. Oops. I lost Mascara. Yeah. We're there back. Anyways, he should have been someone that would have never got fired. I mean, he has the passion since he was a kid, you know, and all that. And it's, it's sad to see somebody that has that much passion in a company and that business, not even the company, the business that's worked with the company for so long just to be good. You laid off, go home. Good luck. That was the you wrong know. move. That was the oh, wrong it, move. It was it was totally the wrong move. And you know why it's the wrong move? Because this guy was was a double fan. So yeah. it's one it's one thing to work on Transformers and it's another thing to be a fanboy of Transformers. If you're a Transformer guy and you're a fanboy and you're a designer, like you have a lot of things to bring to the table for Transformers. And then he started getting into Power Rangers and then he started like a Power Rangers and like mm-hmm. It wasn't like they just moved him around. Like, oh, you're working on Indiana Jones Seven. I don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> like, I'll yeah. do it to shut it up because it's my <laughs> job. Like, there was actual passion when he was talking about Power Rangers, when he was talking about Transformers, when he was talking about this or that. <laughs> yeah, and that's what you need in, in character creation and toy designing because you move that passion onto the customer, and then the customer buys it, and they're like, oh man, I'm so excited. I get this. I want the next one and the next one. And I want to build my team and I want to build my roster and I want to create exactly. my universe. So the, there's that. But that that was rough. That was rough. Uh, well, before- like I said, like I said, if I could find the Megazord and those th- those uh, the Green Ranger, Red Ranger in my hometown, I'd be picking them up because not only now are they cheap at Ross, but they're also highly collectible because they don't exist on the Hasbro market. Hasbro market yeah. when they sell out, they sell out. They're not gonna do any more toys of Power Rangers. Yeah. I yeah. Think. <laughs> well, well, we'll see where it yeah. goes. Actually, this goes to our audience. Audience, if you guys want to send the our show to John, he's more than invited on the show. We'll have him on. We'll have a nice discussion. We'll talk, you know. Trust door door is open. John, you're you're more yeah. than welcome on the show. Um so let's uh, start with these uh, reviews. I had a few, mm-hmm. so I figured I just... We don't do one character reviews, so I think it's fine getting a few of these uh, in there. Yes. I found the... Now, I'm sorry, go ahead. I did find... Well, last time I went to us, I did find the uh, turtles that belong to that set. And I yeah. think I sent the pictures to you. There was one one I couldn't take a picture because my phone was acting up, but it was the Raphael <laughs> of that set. Mm-hmm. And because they're pretty cheap areas, you know, but they're good looking, a good looking set. Yeah. Turtles, you know. Yeah, for 10 bucks, you kind of just, you take what it is for 10 bucks, you know. Yeah. So let's start with the uh, Green Ranger here. See the box right there. Yeah, I'm going to blow you up, man. Awesome. Just hold on. It's going to hurt a little. 
<laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll be all right, buddy. Uh, okay. There's nothing on the spines, so let's uh, crack them open here. Man, this was such a waste of time, and like this destroyed like other brands. Well, see, as well. see, you you did They're it. Plastic right? free. You did it wrong though. Look on the bottom. On the bottom, there's a rip, so you can play like an actual VHS. Okay. I'll be all right, funny. bro. I know, I know. I would be all right too, but I think it's funny that they did that. <laughs> you ripped the bottom, and <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm all right. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so, you remember this? The the toilet paper oh, wrapping. I still have thing. some of that because I have my uh, Dino Thunder Black stuff still. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I like that. I hate Sid. I like that. This is a nice backdrop, if like for yeah. photographers and stuff. This oh, you yeah. can probably keep and put anybody on there because this usually means most of the Mighty Morphins. They all had the the green with the light green in the middle. Well, see, here, here's the thing: and the Super Seven ones also do that. I used to use them all the time for the backdrops. Yeah. See, it looks so, nice. Like, but being a cheap, you know, lightning collection, non lightning collection character, that looks really nice. Let's see if he wants to stand up because this character has been in the box for like three years. So, so my understanding of these characters, you could uh, tell me if I'm wrong or not, because I do not collect lightning collection like a lot of people did. That that's just a repurposed lightning collection action figure, pretty much. This, no, no, no? this is. This is um, this is a standard uh, edition because remember when we were talking about uh, Hasbro only made like three teams. Yeah, I mean they they on the regular line they only made Beast Morphers, um, the other one uh, Dino Dino Fury, kind of, and these these they yeah. just like replaced the. The Megazord line, which I love, the the Megazord line, the ones that you're talking about, the like six inch Megazords. That's yeah, that's a good idea. That they just dropped, they decided not to do it, and they decided to release the Rangers like this in those type of boxes to I don't know make a big deal about the anniversary. But hold on, let me. Yeah, the only anniversary thing here is this, the 30th. But there's nothing yeah. special about it. These are the, the basic release figures. A lot of these uh, joints and things, they're uh, repurposed from other figures. I mean, he, he moves a little stiff, but I think that's kind of the way that's, it is. Yeah, well, that's going to loosen up in time. Yeah. But you know, you know what is funny, though, is the boots. They have the black heel on them. I think the vest can be take the shield can be taken off because it because it's a pliable plastic. You probably have to pop the head off. Yeah, but I don't want to do that just because those pins in the back seem like such a hassle to take off, like put back oh, on. Oh, they got pins. Yeah, that looks like the um. They're like little Peggy pins that you yeah, clip yeah. back on, but I don't <laughs> think you could do it. And yes, they got a little diamond. Yeah, yes, yeah, he he's fully okay. painted. He's good. He's got the right um, morpher color. I'll give him that. Like they, yeah, they that's actually, a common. That's a common mistake a lot of the times that the the cheap figures usually just have the silver morpher yeah. for Tommy, and it's like, what the heck is wrong with you guys? Yeah, but they didn't yeah. give him his black uh, holster. He has a white holster. <laughs> just to like yeah. stick it to you. Well, that's an easy paint job. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what he brings. So, he brings... A power coin. Yeah. No, actually, that looks better th now that I see it in, well on this screen than it does on... Like, the images they show online of that it looks like it's so, like, paper thin. Well, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a foil sticker on a piece of plastic. Well, no, but I mean, it looked like it was a piece of paper originally. On oh. the photos, it looks like a piece of paper. Okay, yeah, I was just checking yeah. the box that if it came with a with a blaster or not. But it doesn't. Yeah. Does it even come with the dragon dagger? <laughs> it comes with the sword of darkness. Really? Uh, 
A very skinny, toothpicky looking sort of darkness. Wow. Like it, it looks like it's loyal subjects ish. Like yeah, I don't want to play with it too much. I think I. Th- <laughs> and the, oh, the dragon dagger. Uh, let's see how it looks with it. Oh, speaking of the sword of darkness, I don't know if you know. Um, what is it? A hero? Hero? I think it's like Hero Academy or something like that. I've is heard of it. Like- it's like actually making the real Sword of Darkness. It's like six hundred dollars. Oh, it's made, out of, it's made out of metal and everything, and it's like I think it's like five, almost like no, I think it's like three feet long. It's like a full replica of it. It's like holy crap! Yeah, you know, I'm looking at the helmet. It's missing some detail on that helmet. It wouldn't be hard to fix it. But it looks pretty good. It's fine. It's not as squished as like you know the Lightning Collections. All of their heads look like they're uh-huh. when they should be motorcycle helmeted. No. Yeah, this this is pretty uh proportional for the body because remember this is for the body. The head has to kind of go with it, so it goes pretty well. I think if you know, I recommend this. This is a, a nice figure. There's nothing wrong with him. And like I said, since Hasbro only did like three teams, you might as well have, you know, this team too. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good work, Hasbro. Jeez, was the last time we said that on the show, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what he looks like holding the sort of darkness. Oh, so you were saying about the? I'm sorry. Say that again. The. That somebody's doing a replica of the Sword of Darkness, right? Yeah. So uh, how much? Looking... How much is it going for? Six hundred. That's not bad. No, I just can't afford it. When I first saw it, I fell in love with them. Like I want that so bad, you know, because it's like I have the Dragon Dagger, I have the Morpher. It's like that was like the only thing of his I'm really missing. But six hundred dollars for. For a sword that what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna hang it on the wall and hope to God my kids don't come along and try to pick it up and cut each other with it. <laughs> yeah. It's made out of metal. I mean it's real, it's gonna be a real flipping sword, you know. Yeah. For Empress Rita. <laughs> you remember when he held that sword? <clears throat> yeah. And that that's the Green Ranger. It's not bad. I mean, I, like I said, I still want it. So I saw next is right here. Man, you the, got a hefty. You have a hefty collection of Krang. You know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I might end up even even more. I might end up getting the the comic book colors, the, the Krang Krang's Android body. If I find it yeah. at a cheap enough price, I mean. Well, see, that's the thing is everybody, right? Well, not everybody, but there's a lot of people like us that like to look for the deals right now instead of going out and paying the thirty five, forty dollars, or whatever they are, brand new. It's like just. Yeah. yeah, you. This is exactly the same figure I've got in purple. I just got him in his regular colors because yeah, ten bucks will be all right. Oh yeah. I was texting you the when I picked these up. I was like, "You did, you did." The, re- the renders look pretty close to what the figure looks like, except for April. Remember what we did, April? April yeah. didn't look anything. <laughs> and April was. Stacked, and the April we got in the box was not. So here he is. Oh, he's more secure. Wow, look at that! Yeah. Last time I just went clunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's a lot better. Yeah. But does it still balance? <laughs> uh, we will see right now. I'm sure it will. I mean, it's the same design and everything. Oh, you remember this time. Yeah. I want to <laughs> see if, if the arms will... Because uh, remember the arms were an issue last time? So oh, yes. I am, the arms for the, for the... For the walker. Yeah. Matter. I need my body. Uh, 
Right. <laughs> he's perfect. He's fine. Hey, look, Super Seven. He doesn't fall, and he was only ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that's a low blow, but it's fine. Hey, I I'm a I'm a, I buy most of the Super Seven stuff, so I got. I'm talking out of both sides of my face. Now. <laughs> I, I know, I know. A, a lot of, I'll, you know what though? It's any toy company has their problems, and that's the truth, everybody. If you're a toy collector of any sort, you know, you can have a Mesco toy, you can have a Super 7 toy, Hasbro, um, a Figure Arts, whatever. They're all going to have their issues sooner or later. Somebody's going to yeah. make a character that's t- top heavy or legs are too loose or something because the design sucks, but they, it still looks good, you know? Look, I'm even making noise, and he's still standing. Look, yeah, both no, hands, he's and he's still... Yeah, that is some good some good engineering there. Well, if you look at the feet, the feet are just tripods, it looks like, so that makes a big difference, too. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's well done. Well done, loyal subjects. There's Krang. And now let's move on to the next review. Good Krang. Nothing wrong with it. This is actually a better Krang. This is a better Krang. Because remember the other one, the arms fall out? Look, the arms don't fall out of this one. Yes. So this is better. That means the pegs are built or designed better. Yeah, they were, they were more uh, precise. Yeah. Now, regular Casey. Casey Jones. Yeah. My man, Casey Jones. I wish they would have given him his blue shirt. They gave him a turquoise shirt for some reason. Like, Well, you know what? I have an original Casey Jones, and it's the same way. So. Yeah. Even his uh, bag is that color, too. Wow. That's some nice art. It is. That's pretty much the figure you got in the box. No big issues there. Oh, I I did see uh, Loyal Subjects is actually advertising that their stuff is at Ross. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And people were giving up the business. Bro, you still have to sell this stuff. You still have to move it. If you move it at Ross or you move it at Liquidators, you're still moving it. Yeah. People exactly. are seeing the figures. It's not like they're hiding them. Well, that's like Super 7 is now promoting we're going to be at Walmart, you know. It's like, come on now. The deluxe figures are all going to go to Walmart. It's like, that's nice. They have some in Target, so we'll, we'll <laughs> see. Yeah. Let's see here. I was just a sticker. This is the same Casey we already reviewed last time. Uh, let's see if anything's different. Uh, he's still got these uh, ugly joints. Yeah, these elbows that are God help me joints. <laughs> you know, with this, see, I can't even. The leg is a little. Okay, so for those of you getting this, try to heat up his uh, his uh, his waist because this is a little stiff, and you don't want to break this small peg. So just FYI, comes with his bag, his stick, his other stick, his bat, two hands, and. Uh, his regular head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this is the first time you get this head because remember in the other one he had the the white mask and the the Patriot mask. So Yeah, yeah. Let's see what he looks like without it. Okay, so that's a stiff ball joint. Yeah. 
Okay, so here's another thing. The hands are really tight. Like I'm putting the bat in and I'm I'm like I can hear creak, creak, creak. Uh, no, no, I'm folding the thumb. You see oh, what's wow. happening to the thumb? And all I'm yeah. doing is putting the bat on it. I'm not like ripping it or anything. This I'm just trying to like put them in a pose, but That almost looks like a 2003 Casey Jones. Yeah, I think that's where they got the head idea. Because, you know, Loyal Subjects takes inspiration from a little bit of everything. Yeah. He only does time stand. I, only time I've seen Casey Jones without a mask, well, yeah, look, besides I'm, the movies and... <clears throat> good balance. The new dick, doesn't fall. Yeah. The, the original comic book had him without a mask on for a little bit. And it's kind of like that, kind of... But that looks more 2003-ish. Yeah. Yeah. There was a, a Playmates variant that had, like, the half face. Or he had, like, a half face. Yeah, yeah. But that was never, like, mass-produced. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if that was actually, like, um, what do you call it? Official. Because some people are saying that was, like, just uh, somebody custom did a head. It wasn't oh, specifically okay. by Varner. It wasn't by Playmates. I, I don't know what have to look into that a little more before I say this or that. And finally here, the last review. My boy here, Rocksteady. And this one is inspired by the Playmates Mutations version. You remember the Mutations one that had the, yeah. the head that can flip in and out? That's why I bought this one. Because <clears> I'm, <throat> I'm, I'm going to have him like in his human form. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, sorry. I was yeah. at Burlington the other day, and yes, you would sir. not believe what I saw from Playmates being what? there. What? The new Mutant Mayhem, or maybe it's Tells. I think it's Mutant Mayhem. Pizza Launcher. The one that just came out, the band that came out with the Pizza Launcher, is at Burlington's already. And we're like, come on, dude. Really? The yellow and, one? The big yeah, one? Yeah, the big one. I was like, come oh, on, really? Yeah. Oh, I, I think I know what you're talking about, but you might have seen the remote control one, though. That might not be. No, no, no. Be... This, this ain't the remote control one. This the same yeah. one I have, the regular one. I believe so. Yeah, I believe it's the same one. But yeah, it's no remote control in it. I was like, really? I've seen the remote control. One. <laughs> it's like this just came out not too long ago. I was really surprised. Well, time doesn't stop. We're we're almost in Thanksgiving and. <laughs> That movie was what a year ago already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See how time flies. Yeah, it scares me. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. good renders. Yeah. I like the human head. That, that like I said, that's why I bought this because I want to have human Rocksteady and Bebop. Yeah, that's the biggest thing with collectors. They want the human side too, and a lot of companies don't do that. Like Power Rangers, they really don't do human size. Now you can get them customized, you know. Yeah, well, th this already existed with Playmates. This is just yeah. their version. And I like this version more than the Playmates one. Hopefully. Because remember with Playmates, the, they never had regular human uh, Rocksteady or Bebop. They just had those mutations ones. And their legs would always like crack out. Yeah, I have break. that. That plastic was sh <laughs> shenanigans. Shenanigans. There he is. There's the box. Goodbye, box. Okay, so he comes with this like super generic uh, rifle. Oh, yeah. That that looks like something. You see a dollar Joe. store, yeah, or or anywhere. This looks like a super generic rifle, like the most generic-y looking thing you could possibly have. And he has a knife there. Yeah. And there's the figure. Let's see what he feels like. Cause... All right, so he's oof, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're past Halloween, but you're still gonna get scared. Look at this. 
Jesus Christ. Look at this. I, I don't get that. Look at this, situation bro. is just nasty. It's like, why do you want to do that? <laughs> you know, every time I see someone do that, I always look at my knee like, how is that even possible? Like, I, that doesn't I even look know. right. Does not look right. I do <laughs> not know. It's of a thick plastic, though. I'll give it that. It doesn't feel as... Um... It doesn't feel as um, thin as as bebop because I have bebop and bebop was a lot thinner. This is a uh, chunkier plastic. Okay, so the head moves somewhat, but it doesn't really want to move at the same time. You remember the Flemish one? You could like flip this out and just yes. keep rotating. That was fun. See that that right there, that's not too bad. No. I think the color of the jacket helps it too, so it doesn't seem as bad. But geez, bro, like geez, bro. <laughs> For that, don't See, do I it. <laughs> don't look. I'd rather this than if you're gonna do it, but the double cut, the uh, See, again, that's what I'm talking about. I don't like that much articulation because, yes, you can articulate them a lot, but still, when it comes down to it, it doesn't always look so good. Yeah. The head's on a ball joint, but there's no gift to it. So, like, look, you can't do anything to it. He doesn't have a hat either, which is fine, but I'm just mentioning it. Because, you know, some rock steadies have their little hat on. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. And this doesn't look like the box art because in the box, it doesn't have any. He's like just in his tank top. Whatever. It is what it is. The shirt, at least this part of it, I think it's removable. Yeah, it is. It's of a pliable plastic. So. Oh, here's something. They painted the inside of a hand ring a different color. <laughs> and I don't know why. Because it's a different action figure. <laughs> why would you do this? Like, just keep it green, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, hey, buddy. Maybe it's, maybe it's just cheap, cheaper that way. I don't know, buddy. I, I couldn't tell you. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Actually, that might be why. What? The hands. The, the hands are a different color, so they gotta keep one set. Oh no, look, this, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at this. This is this is Don't funny. Like did. no look, they created a different peg for each hand slot. Look what? at this. Look at this. One of them actually has studs. What the heck is going on? Why? Here? You see, you see the, the little studs, right? And one wow, has, yeah, but I, this I one, does, it. one has it, and one don't. Like, why? You could just mirror this. Like, this toy is easy to design because there's no. Okay, forget the head. The body is the same on the left and as the right. The only difference is the jacket and the. And you, because the jacket's a different piece, but you can like mirror geometry this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the little slice thing to hold his uh, his bayonetta, because yes. it's a a big bayonetta like knife knife like. That's oh, not a man. knife. This is a knife. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't really want to go in, but let, let's see if I can take the head off. Because okay. Oh, look at this. <clears throat> They made it. Yeah. <laughs> they but made again. it so, so. I don't know if this is genius or crazy, but let's look. So this was, I guess, it was meant to be the human, and they just like added in the the Rock City mutant head to like uh -huh. say F it, you know. So let's see what he looks like with his human head. There's a variant of this one too. There's another version of this. Okay, so I like this. This looks good so far. 
See, oh, that yeah. looks good. That looks good. Okay. Little pegs are small, but I don't know why they would do the hand slot thing though. Like that, that's the weirdest thing. On one hand, they put studs, and on the other, they didn't. And it's not even sculpted on, like they forgot to paint it or anything. It's just not on there. Let's see what it looks like holding a... Oh man, these hands are tight. Oh man, they... <laughs> look at this articulation of the arms. That's crazy. Oh buddy, oh buddy. Oh man, I, I popped it off by accident. I saw that. <laughs> man, thankfully it didn't break. Let's see. No, let let's see if I can take off the jacket then, because if if it wants to come off, let's get it off. You know what? Here's this one's tight. So this arm is tight, but the other one's loose. Like what? Again, <clears throat> nothing's perfect. I don't care how much you pay for it. No, I'm not even talking perfect. I'm talking like <laughs> if you have the problem on the left, you should have it on the right. You, you would think. Let's see if I can get him to stand. Okay. okay. Nice. Yeah. So let's see here. I got a lineup. Yeah, they look all right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? Well, I just, well again, they look they look all right. I mean, it's for for what they are, you know. I'm not the the cartoon versions, so yeah, they they could do pretty much anything they really wanted to, and they would look okay. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, we end this part of the show. We're coming back with you for. The second half where we're covering the command center, or yes. you guys might know it as the power dome. Yes. Stay tuned. Bye. All right. Bye.